everybody. <clears throat> See if I can get Echo to go away. Get it set up real quick, and then we'll start. Or not, that would be amazing. I can hear myself because I'm still echoing, right? Okay. All right. Anybody hear me now? Let's see. We can get this where it needs to be. Can you guys all hear me? Are we good now? I have a little bit of an echo still. Okay, good. You can hear me. Awesome. All right. Welcome, guys. Hi, everybody. Uh, such a fun week. It is... Uh, let me turn that off. Can you, if you can all still hear me, that would be amazing. Um, hopefully you can't hear the echo. Like Yes, you hear me, but now it's frozen. Hopefully not. Hopefully you guys can all see me and hear me. We can get... Okay. Woo! Is it still frozen? Hopefully not. It shows it showing on my end. Oh, we'll see. We're good now. We're going to go for it. So everybody, welcome. Um, I'm Andrea, Andy K's Cookies. Um, hopefully the good. sound is good. Okay. Welcome to my cookie studio. I am so excited. What a fun week. Uh, Cakes by Timbo has hosted this amazing week of spooktorial week of sharing. And oh my goodness. So many sugar artists, so many amazing tutorials out there. So I don't really do gory so much. Um, I do more cutesy, pretty, creepy. So uh, we're going to tackle this cookie today together. And we're just going to jump right in. So I'm going to work and I'm going to try to talk to you as I'm working so that you can see my process. And if you have questions, post them. I'm pretty good at multitasking, so we'll see how this goes. But um, we're just gonna jump right in. So this is the cookie that we're gonna be making today. It is a super fun, I'm gonna move, actually, move it out of the way. It is a really fun cutter from Bobby's Cookies and Cutters. It is so many different things, actually. I have flipped it for a couple things, but it's a three-tiered pumpkin that we're doing today. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna jump in. I decorate uh, vanilla sugar cookies and I use traditional, but not traditional, uh, royal icing. I actually add corn syrup to my royal icing and you can kind of tell I have a sheen to my icing and that's from the corn syrup and drying in front of a fan. So um, that's just kind of a little bit of background history on mine and what I'm working with. So. What we're gonna do, I've already got, I've got a blank cookie here. Um, shout out to Arlene, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see? Baking mat gives this amazing grid on the back and it really has stopped my cookies from any spreading while I'm baking. It's been amazing, so super happy about that. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, I usually start uh, with the base of the cookie. So if you can see, this is a really fun process that's really, really popular right now with cookie artists. This is actually royal icing, and if you can see the fun texture to it, it's kind of hard to see and pick up in the picture, but it is royal icing, 
And what I have done, I'm going to show you, we're going to start on this cookie. And hopefully I stay in the screen. Okay, I have my royal icing. I use tipless bags for most everything except for flowers. So I'm going to start this side. Now, separating it like I just did into the sections is not necessary for this technique that I'm going to show you, but I think it did. You can tell a little bit of the line here, and you can tell the line over here of doing it into sections. So when you go to flood, I flood every other one so that it really defines itself with definition. And we'll show more of that when we do the pumpkins. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. And the great part with this technique that I'm about to show you, um, and I actually taught this at my last cookie con class, or it might have been two ago, actually. Um, really fun technique, and it kind of makes it to where you don't really have to be perfect for it. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the center one so that I can show you what I do to get that really fun kind of concrete, kind of concrete texture. So not even necessary to completely smooth this one out like we normally would. So what I'm going to do is I work with Zenlogi. Ooh, is it in? I don't know if you've ever used Zenlogi. It is a non-bleached parchment, and I love it. It's amazing. I really thought there's no difference in parchment. But this, for some reason, it dries so much faster than my traditional white bleached parchment. Okay. So I have my picture or my little piece of uh, parchment and I am going to put it on top and just tap it down into the icing. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we're doing. So my base coat, which is going to be the concrete pot that we're doing the pumpkins in, this is the base coat. I put the parchment on top of it and I'm gonna let it dry just like you would if you were doing a base coat on a sugar cookie. We don't have time to let it dry today. So I'm gonna show you, I've already done it. So we're gonna switch these out real quick. Okay, so I actually did this last night. I put my Zenlogi parchment on it and let it dry overnight. And we're gonna peel it off and see what happens. That you'll be able to see the really cool, look at that texture. I really hope you guys can see that. It really flattens it to really a concrete type texture. It does create small little bubbly kind of indentions in it, and that's really what we want for this look, okay? So there is that, and all that is, and you can do it with traditional parchment paper. So if you have parchment, you can use it, not wax paper, but parchment paper. I find that the Zenlogi releases on all of my transfers, and we're going to do transfers today too, but I find that they really do release so much simpler than my regular parchment, and my transfers dry faster. I don't know why, but it does. Okay, so there we go. Now you can see that this one is definitely shaded, and we're going to shade that in a little bit once we get um, the pumpkins on because most people don't have an airbrush. A lot of people don't have an airbrush. I get it, totally fine. We're not gonna use an airbrush today. You can if you want, but we're gonna resort back to regular food coloring, water, and a paintbrush to give this all the texture that we want, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move on to the pumpkins. And I am using a white, turn this off, a white royal icing in my tipless bag. And we're gonna see how this goes because I'm pretty far away. Okay, so when I'm doing pumpkins, I used to, when I first started doing cookies, and so many of you can probably relate to this, you would outline and flood the entire pumpkin and then add the lines to the pumpkin to give it that dimension. But now that we are more advanced with our cookies, what we're doing is we're going to be adding dimension just like we did 
with our pot and separating the sections by flooding. So we're gonna flood each of these little sections individually to make sure that we're giving our pumpkin all that extra texture. And then one final pumpkin. Now, you can do pumpkins in any color. You can do them with uh, patterns, stripes, polka dots, you can do whatever you want. But we're just doing more of a simple looking one, okay? All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in and fill in each section. Now, I am asked more times than not when I'm doing cookies, how do I get my royal icing so puffy? And we're gonna talk about that. So normally, you just fill it in and hope that there's no big points or no big issues with it. Let's see if I can get it, there we go. But what I'm gonna tell you to do is after you fill in a small section, I want you to take your bag of icing and I want you to actually go back in there and fill it in in the middle. Because the last thing that we want is our pumpkins to sink and to crater. And that's because you're not getting enough icing in it. So we're gonna make sure that we fill it and then almost overfill it. So that is how I get my puffy icing. So for this pumpkin, I would let these dry before I go back to do this section and this section, okay? Now, if you're a visual person, like I am, that means that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move on to this section and this one, I'm probably gonna wait on that one actually, but I'm gonna do this one because we don't want any of these pumpkins to mesh together and to fall together. So we're just going to do all of that. Okay, we let this set for a minute or two to let each section crust over. Do you have volume on another? I do not. Um, Somebody else, Somebody else asked that, but I don't. Let me see if I can fix it. Nope, my sound is completely off on that one. So. works out. Okay. All right. So now I've actually gone ahead and we're going to take these out and we're going to put in this one. I should be not frozen now. It's showing fine on my end guys. I mean, it is showing really good on mine. So I don't know. Okay. So this I've gone ahead and I've already done all the pumpkin sections and the base so that we can go ahead and paint on this one and shade it and give it a little bit of color. Okay, so what I do, let me move all of this. Are we good? It's a little delayed, so I'm hoping that you guys are all there. All right, so I have gel icing that I use, gel icing gel food coloring. Today I'm going to be using Chef Master's Coal Black paintbrush and a little bit of water. And I'm going to try to get, I'm going to move some of my black over so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to be taking just a little bit of the black and I'm pulling it out with water and then I'm going to start adding, and you'll be able to tell if you want to add more color to it or not. 
see if that helps. I'm going to definitely take the darker of the black and I'm definitely going to be adding it to the edge where I want the definition to be. And as soon as you start hitting it with the coloring, look at it, it just kind of works like a watercolor. But I want it to be darker on the edge. I do actually, I love that somebody asked that. A lot of cookiers use vodka on cookies. I do occasionally, but because this is the concrete effect, adding water to it is gonna pit it just a little bit and create even better of that concrete look to it. Okay, if you can see, do you see the pitting right here? We want to do that and the water gives that look to it so i'm going to keep painting i've got the little crevice here i'm really going to darken it and accentuate it most of this top section is going to get covered up by flowers and spiders so there's really no need there we go okay so now I have the awesome um, shading on the concrete to give it that look. Now I'm gonna actually go back with the black on the pumpkins. Instead of using a tiny brush, we're gonna use the same brush that we were just using. And we're going to go into the crevices of each pumpkin line and section. And I've got water on it. Now because I'm using so little water, it's not gonna hit this icing. Plus, I don't use the traditional royal icing. I use corn syrup in it, and so it really does help that. Now, cool thing about gel coloring, if you put too much gel coloring on, you can go back and lift some of it back off. Now, if you're just hopping on and you're a little late to the demo, the bottom section I did in royal icing and then did more of the concrete look with parchment. So you're seeing the difference in this texture versus the pumpkin texture. Now you really wanna make sure that you get all of that color down into the depths in between, like so, and on the edges, because we really wanna define our pumpkins. Okay. So now that I've got that on there, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna kind of pull and shade it a little bit because pumpkins have a little bit of lines on them. The cookie cutter is from Bobby's Cutters. You can find her on Etsy. And she has other examples of what um, this cutter's actually been used for. I'm gonna call this pretty good. And since every pumpkin is different, take, pull that down. What you can't see, I guess, in the camera is that I have a little bowl of water and I have a towel sitting here. So I'm actually dipping my water and then tapping it onto a towel so that I'm not putting all that excess water on. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna call that pretty good. Let's set that down to see what it looks like. Okay. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could go back and add white coloring to it. Uh, let's see, I have white. And we're not gonna dilute this white, I'm just gonna use straight white to see what it does. Let's play. Okay. All right. So we are going to be completely happy with where we're at. Okay. All right. So there is our stacked pumpkins in our pot. Now, let me move my coloring out of the way. <clears throat> this will be up for 24 hours. I will save it. It'll be on my IGTV so you can check it out and finish it later. Okay. So here we go, move this one. So this is where we're at now, and this is where we're gonna go. So you can see I've got flowers, and I have little spiders that I made, and I made my spiders ahead of time, but we'll pipe some real quick. But I, look, look at this. These were transfers that I did last night. They all released themselves off of the Zenlogy, and they're just ready to use. But what I do is I have, my parchment. This is the unbleached parchment. And let me cut my bag real quick. I have black royal icing. Now you could, if you wanted to, pipe your spiders directly onto your cookie if you wanted to. But I love to do transfers. I'm a transfer person, and let me tell you why. Oh, look, I have coloring on me. Let me tell you why I like to do transfers. If you look at this cookie, you can tell that nothing is flush and flat on the cookie, okay? I like to be able to prop, you can see the spider up here. He's propped up on top of leaves. The ones down here is actually on top of a leaf on top of a leaf kind of crawling onto the flower. We can put one straight on the flower if we want, but you can't really do that as well without transfers. So that's why I use transfers. So let's go ahead and have some fun. All right, so I use tipless bags for pretty much everything except for my flowers. I like to use tips for most of my flowers, not all, but most of them. I also pipe leaves with tipless bags. And if you've never done this, if you've never done this, I'm gonna show you how to cut it. So here's the tipless bag. We are going to be cutting it just like a leaf tip. I'm going to cut it to the center. I'm trying to find something that's gonna show it. There we go. So basically I am mimicking what a cutter or a uh, tip, leaf tip would be. Okay, and there's my leaf. No need to have, no need to have any tips for it, okay? So here we go. We are just going to pipe a few leaves. I'm gonna put some leaves up here. Is it on? Okay, I think it does better if I hold it up for you guys, which might get interesting. Okay, and then we're going to pipe leaves around the base. Now, if you want a larger leaf, that's easy enough. Just go back and we're going to clip it a little bit bigger. Okay, all right. Okay, so there are leaves that we just added all with a tipless bag. How cool is that? All right, here comes the fun part. Let's do some flowers. If you are um, someone that does a lot of 
um, florals or um, even tipless bags. Here is my tip for doing flowers. So I use tipless bags. I do not use couplers. I do not use um, washable bags anymore. I ain't got time for it. So here's what I do. I take my tip. Today I'm using a Wilton 102. I am going to plop it. The tip goes straight into the tipless bag, right? Kind of an oxymoron, tip in a tipless bag. I'm going to cut my bag and push my tip down in it. All of a sudden, a tipless bag with a tip in it has become my coupler and my bag, but we don't have to wash them, okay? Then I'm going to take my royal icing bag that I just cut, and I'm placing this bag directly into this bag. That's it. Okay, so let's test it and see. We're good to go. I'm going to normally, um, I'm going to show you this flower on a nail head. But when we actually go to do it, I'm going to go ahead and just do them straight on the cookie. But for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so I have my nail head and my parchment. Okay, now this, this particular flower is one that I guarantee you, you guys have seen a gazillion times on Instagram and YouTube, because this is kind of the popular flower right now. The only difference is, is that we're doing it miniature. Okay, so all we're going to do is up and down, up and down, up and down. That's it. That's it. Okay, this one, we're going to grab some sprinkles. It's a good thing I'm actually in my cookie room. Okay, so I have my little flower and I'm gonna drop some sprinkles in. Okay, you can use whatever you want. You can use royal icing, you can do whatever you want. Okay, this is, I wanna say it's one of the easiest flowers the way I just showed you, it's just a, it's just up and down motion. So we're gonna show you again. The widest part of the tip is angled at your stomach, if that helps. So it is definitely angled down, okay? And we're going to start in the center and we're just going up and down as I rotate. That's it, that's it. This one is a 102 Wilton. Now this style of um, the flower is typically done with a 104. And let me tell you what people do. I am just going to show you. Ooh, we're gonna get really kind of rebelish right now. Let's see if I can do this without making a total mess. I have my silicone. Okay, this is what most people do. As a round cookie, they take and they just go around and around and around and around and around and around. Okay, that's what we're doing, but we're doing it smaller and we're doing it um, more petite. So we're only going around one time. I'm not a big fan of doing the full cookie like that with all of this, because that's a lot of royal icing. Um, but this is just the miniature style, okay? Easy. These transfers will dry super quick to where you can handle them. But we're gonna go ahead and do it straight onto the cookie. Ah, it'll be okay. All right, are we ready? We're gonna do one, we're gonna do one over here on top of the leaves. Am I in? I think so. If you don't have a swivel, it's just a matter of stopping and starting. Okay, there's one. And we're gonna plop some sprinkles down. We're gonna go crazy. Okay, so this was without a swivel. I'm gonna show you on a swivel because these are really popular too. Okay. All right, here we go. We're gonna do another one. Let's go over here, kind of down on the bottom. And that is 
all it is. It's really not a complicated flower. Um, if you want to do and learn more of the complicated flowers, I teach uh, a lot of, I know I don't use my swivel nearly enough. I really do teach, I focus on florals a lot. In my cookie con classes, I've taught them at roundups, I've taught them everywhere. But I am currently working on my first virtual class and it is going to be focused on floral. So I'm so excited, I can't wait for that. Okay, so here we go. Let's get to the spiders. So I have my cute little spiders that I've already done. And if I can pick him up real quick. Okay, so I have one. We're gonna put one on top of a flower this time. And then I've got one that I'm going to put, my spider's too big. We put him up on the top. Oops, and I just knocked him off because my icing got dry. So let's pipe real quick another one. I'm gonna put him there. And then let's add another one just because we can. Let's add him and add him over here. Now, a lot of the times I do take, oh, there we go. We're gonna hide him. Nothing worse than a creepy crawly spider being hidden, right? Um, a lot of the times what I do with my transfers is, is that I will pipe a leaf onto the cookie and then my transfer pops off and that is what glues it basically to the cookie. So that's a really easy thing to do. Okay, I could stop here. Oh, I'm gonna add one more spider. I forgot that on this little guy, they actually had one on a pumpkin. So let's put him on a pumpkin. I'm gonna have him crawling up. Okay, so there, you know what, just for fun, we're gonna tuck another one in there. Okay, now because these are teeny tiny little spiders, I'm going to pipe the legs straight on to the cookie. So, straight on. Okay. Hopefully I'm in the screen. When is the floral class? That's a great question. So I have already designed the class and taken photos of it. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm getting really, really close to it. Um, so stay tuned to my page because it's gonna be happening soon. Okay, all right, here we go. The last of the legs. Hope I'm in screen. Okay, and there is my pumpkin. I have a little sprinkle floating around. There we go. So this is the cookie we just made. And the one, I guess I did make it a little bit darker, a little creepy and darker. So that is, that's it. How fun is that? So recap, Cutter is from Bobby's Cookies and Cutters, Bobby's Cutters now. Um, I use Zenlogy for my transfers. And then you can rewatch the video if you wanna know about anything else. So I hope that you liked the cookie. I hope that you picked something up today and are willing to try something a little bit new. And I'm just so thankful that you guys all joined me today. I hope you have a great, not too scary and creepy of a Halloween, but I hope you have a great Halloween. Thanks guys so much for jo joining me. I'll see you later, bye-bye.